Hi, I am Chanchal Bose from Mosby Linux. In this episode, I'll demonstrate how to configure storage area network using iSCSI target service in Red Hat Linux 7.1. In part 1 of this episode, I have already demonstrated how to create two virtual machine for the purpose of iSCSI configuration. Before I get started, let's be comfortable with few terms I'll be using for this exercise. IQN stands for an iSCSI qualified name. IQN has a mandatory naming format. IQN, year, month, dot com, reverse domain, then any optional string with a colon separation. Target, an iSCSI storage resource made available by the iSCSI server to iSCSI clients as devices called logical units. LUN is logical unit number numbered block devices made available by the target iSCSI server. Let's get started with the actual demonstration. As you can see, the two virtual machines are up and running. RHL 7-storage is the iSCSI server. I have logged into it. First, I am doing an fdisk-l that will show me all the disks that are attached to it. One dev SDA 10.7 GB. The second one is dev SDB. 2GB hard disk. How I have attached or created the second hard disk that I have demonstrated in my part 1 demonstration. Here you can see this is the routine using which I have added the second hard disk. This add hardware button has to be checked in and this is the way I have created it. I have also attached the RHL server 7.1 ISO lying on my desktop as CD-ROM. Next I am going to configure YAM repository. I am going to configure my CD as my repository. Here is the details of my repo configuration. Next I am going to mount the CD as slash MNT. Once I have done that, it would be, I would, I'll be able to install target CLI in this fashion. yum install minus y target CLI and the target CLI package will get installed from the CD itself. Next I am going to start after installation of the target CLI, the target CLI routine. Target CLI is a complete routine. It behaves as if it's in a CH root environment. And if you do a ls, then it will show all the directories that is lying within it. First of all, I am going to the backstore device. Thereafter, block create disk one, and I am going to attach the LVM that I have created in the previous demonstration. That is iSCSI LV1. That will create a backstore device disk one. I am also going to create a second backstore device named disk1 and this will be my hard disk that I have attached earlier that is dev sdb. Target CLI supports tab completion. You can take advantage of that. Now I am going to create a file based storage device. For that I am going to use this file io create disk or file1 and then slash root this is file1 slash root disk3 file1 this is going to create a file of 200 MB on roots home directory its name will be disk3 underscore file so all the backstore or block storage have been attached or created next I have to create the IQN or the uniquely iSCSI qualified name so for that I am going to the iSCSI directory that is cd iSCSI next create IQN now the IQN naming pattern takes a mandatory format that is IQN then year then month that is dash month then dot com and your domain name reversed basically thereafter an optional colon separated name. I am going to name it as storage. So the IQN has been created. Here you can see it IQN 2015-6 com.example.com.storage. The next thing that you have to create is ACLs. 
that is the security measure that I am going to take. Who can attach these backstore devices? For that, we need to create the ACLs. So within the IQN directory, there is a TPG1 directory. TPG stands for Target Portal Group. There you will find the ACL directory. So ACL, next ACL forward slash create. Now create the ACL for that. Just copy the IQN 2015 6 example dot com dot example. After that, I am going to type the name of server one. That is the name of the target service. Name could be anything. The colon part after colon part could be anything of your choice. Now the ACL has been created and this ACL will be applied to all the LANs and portals that we are going to create next. Next routine is we need to create the LANs or the logical unit names for each of the backstore devices. For that we have entered the LANs directory then create take advantage of the command completion of target CLIs that is backstores within backstores there is block disk one so first we are going to create this LAN the first one will be named as LAN 0 the second one will be LAN 1 third one will be LAN 2 so now all the LANs or the logical unit names have been created our next task is to define the portal that is the IP and port from which these target backstore devices will be made available to client systems for that I am going to the portal directory that is portal forward slash create next I type the IP address of the system running the target service which in my case is 192.168.100.100 now the portal group has also been created next we have to define the firewall rules for that i'll have to allow access from port 3260 so firewall command minus minus add hyphen port 3260 and next i'll i'm going to make this particular firewall rule as permanent once this has been created, this firewall rules have been created, we need to start enable target service. Next, we need to start the target service. If you like this presentation, you may well click the like button. You can also subscribe to this channel. In that case, you get the information of new uploads in your mailbox. Once it has been done, we are going to switch over to the client system running the client system that is going to access this target service I am defining the repo and I have already attached the CD-ROM to the system and I am mounting it as slash MNT next I am installing I am going to install iSCSI initiator utils package this is the client package that is required on the client systems so I am going to install it yum install iSCSI initiator utils that will install the necessary packages if you get this error just import this rpm gpg key from the cd-rom the package is already installed so we just start the iSCSI service once it is started next get started with the discovery for that I am going to open a man page man iSCSI ADM if you go to the end of it you will find the examples just copy the example and paste it to the other terminal that I have kept open in the client system here you need to change the portal part that is the IP address in my case the IP address is 192.168.100.100 so I am accordingly making the change to the command here it is next press enter yes it has discovered the IQN that is IQN 2015-06.com.example.com colon storage next I am going to attach this for this I need to type this and again in the portal part I need to replace this 
you can also take advantage before typing this command from the man page itself here is the complete command iskazi adm minus minus mod node minus capital t and your iq and name take advantage of this man page command you can copy it completely from here from the login command itself now if you see this error don't get disheartened you are lucky go to the server and see the log messages here you will find that iqn that is the client is forwarding is iqn 1994.05.com.redhat which is not the name i am supposed to be forwarding from the client so let's look into the client system here it is cat iskazi initiator name itself that name is there we need to change it and change it to this that is iqn201506.com example.com dot .com dot example colon server1 so just copy up to this and edit the etc etc slash iskazi and here it is just replace this part of the string and paste this iqn example colon storage change it to server1 now once done save it and then try to rediscover and try to attach that remote system we are going to run the same command again this time around yes successfully attached now if you do an ls blk it will show you all the hard disks have been attached as if they are local hard disk dev sdc dev sdd dev sdb they are all as if they are locally attached hard disks you can partition them using the graphic user tool or even you can partition it using f disk we are going to partition it using f disk tool first i run this f disk minus c dev sdb or f disk minus l i am going to partition the first hard disk that i have discovered that is dev sdb so here is the f disk routine it shows that it is an 1 gb hard disk so i am going to partition it and going to create a primary partition of 1 gb and i am going through the f disk routine i am going to create a primary partition defaults are okay with me just press enter now press p yes the partition has been created and it is dev sdb1 so let us do a w and then do a part probe for updating the system partition information once done next i am going to format this partition by using this command mkfs.ext4 you can make it ext xfs or ext3 dev sdb1 now the formatting part is over yes next we are going to mount this play directory named slash database and we are going to make it persistence for that we are going to create a directory named slash database once the directory has been created we are going to edit the if etc or etc fs tab at the end of the line end of this file we are going to add one more line that is dev sdb1 next the mount point that would be slash database and third column will be file system which we have made ext4 so database and the third column is directory on which we are third column is file system and fourth column is mounting option defaults and comma underscore net dev that will inform the, the system that it is a network file system and once done save it and just do a mount minus a and doing a df minus h will show you that the database is a 1 gb file system roughly about 1 gb and it is attached to your system If you have any doubt or question, you 
can post it in the comment section if you like this presentation you can subscribe to this channel thanks for watching